Hi everyone and welcome to a latest soldering tutorial. Now in this one I'm going to cover a few different methods to fix your, your PCB traces. As you can see I've got two pretty battered traces that have sort of peeled right back to, to yeah basically the through hole joints sort of down here. Gone right back to yeah right back to the pad this one has so I'll sort of show you how to remove the traces. Now we can use sort of through hole pin as an anchor point for one end of the wire and I'll sort of take you to the other end sort of right down here as you can see these are basically up in the air these two so i'll sort of trim these off and uh, yeah i'll show you a taxi of wires and sort of secure them down and i've got a few other sort of methods where one i'll sort of do a transposed track so i'll show you i can do that um there's another one where i can sort of use some solder braid there's a really good fix for a sort of broken track and yeah i've got other ones where there's like via points you can sort of use for your sort of broken traces so you can sort of make them put them to good use so there's a bit of everything in this video there's a few sort of short demonstrations and yeah hopefully one of the methods can help you out in the future so the one on your screen now is the one i'm going to sort of start with i'm going to do this one with sort of two kind of wire links it's a 30 gauge quite sort of narrow wire as you can see i'm going to take these two get these two traces removed and uh yeah i'll sort of put new wire links on and uh yeah we'll get on with this one now so the first thing i do I'm going to start by sort of wicking off the through hole pins, the solder around them, and then we can use them as an anchor point. And uh, yeah, I'll trim the other end to get them secure. So basically, the first thing to do is to get both ends, get a secure point, and then you can sort of start doing your wire. So we'll move on to that one now. Right, so coming to the stage now where I'm just going to cut these loose traces off and sort of stabilize both ends. Now, I'm, then I'm going to wick the solder off the pads, and so we'll get these sort of. Uh, yeah, pins primed for basically reattaching the new wire. So what you're going to do now, first of all, carefully, just take your scalpel, just gently. Just that this trace will go through really easy, so you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. And that's just pinged off. So that's that one gone. If you can hold the trace while you're sort of, sort of clearing it away, that's uh, that's ideal. So obviously, it could sort of go into a sort of a an area where you don't really want it to. So with this one, I'm just going to score across the trace two or three times. If you've got a multi-layer board, you've just got to be careful. And I should just be able to sort of break that at the uh, at the join. So what we do just get hold of the trace and just wiggle it off this one. It should just snap off. So as you can see that, so I've cleared both of the pads now. So we go to the other end and then we can just sort of tidily sort of try and trim these up. So you've got to be careful with these. So obviously if you've got a multi-layer board, don't want to dig too deep. Try and get them in view for you. Just blow the sort of size up slightly, get them in focus. Just come back down. So all you need sort of a few uh, gentle, yeah, gentle sort of scores across the traces. Just try and get that in view. Just try and get it slightly more round. Hopefully you can see it on your screen. Just going to zoom out actually so you can sort of get a clearer picture. So again, yeah, just two or three gentle scores across. Just got to stabilise these ends. Same on that one. So when you peel these back, they will break at that point. Right, so now I've scored through, sort of quite, yeah, about three quarters through. I'm just gently going to get hold of the trace and just wiggle it, and it should break at the point where I've scored it. So that's, that's a stabilised point. I just gently pull that off. So same with the other one. So yeah, this is a very important stage, basically. If you can get these 
sort of stable when you fit your new sort of wire this end's not going to sort of start curling up so yeah basically we've got them broken away nice and sort of yeah the, what's left of the trace nice and flat to the board so now what we want to do is just gently scrape the trace back right so as you can see i've literally just sort of cleaned the uh the excess resist off i put flux on these so they sort of stand out quite clearly now so i'm just quickly going to go in with a little bit of sort of solder on my iron and just tin the pads so if you pre-flux the pads it should tin quite easy you literally just need a quick swipe of your soldering iron across there and you've got two nicely tinned pads. So what you want to do now, so as you can see they're nicely tinned, ready sort of to take the new wire when we fit it. So we go to the other end, I'm just going to wick off, just wick these pads flat. This will allow when you put the, sold, the new wire around the pin, the sort of a centre core will go nice and flat to the board rather than sort of ride up on the solder. So just take some of this off. Just wick it so it's quite flat. Same with this one, just chop that bit off. When you're using braid, if you can always cut off the sort of part that's loaded with solder, and then it should take it quite easy. So there you go, you've got the sort of two pads nice and flat. So they're ready to take the new wire links, and uh, yeah, the other end's also prepared. So I'm quickly going to clean this flux off, and then I'll sort of show you how we uh, start putting the wire on. Right, so what I've done here, basically if you look at the, the pin on the outer row, so this one down here, what I've done, I've actually got a piece, sort of this just piece of solder, it's actually touching this pad, it's not going around the pin, so it's sort of loose. So you basically, what I've done, I've sort of placed it into the indent in the uh, in the board where the old wire was, and so what I do, this, this is the way I get the exact length of uh, sleeving that I need. So basically what I'd do is I'd remove this solder, straighten it up, and uh, I'd sort of pair a bit of wire off the board the exact same length or the sleeving the exact same length as this solder then I know when I go to place this yeah on the board uh, it's going to fit perfectly and um, with a sort of short wire like this I never sort of attach one end and try and strip the other end while it's attached to the board I think you're in danger of pulling pads or traces off so any quite short wire I sort of prepare it off the board and then drop it into place if it's a long wire you're quite safe doing one end and then uh, yeah, working along and doing the other end, but save a short wire like these, try and prepare it off the board, and then you're definitely sort of safe, you're not going to do any damage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift this off the board, I'll sort of get some, sort of couple of wires prepared. I'm just going to prepare them sort of in advance, just to speed the video up slightly, because I've got a lot to get through. So that's what I do, take this solder off, straighten it up, get me sleeving, strip the same length, and then, uh, yeah, form it like this, and just lay it in position, and uh, yeah, solder it up. So I'll get them prepared now and then I'll drop them on and uh, show you how to solder them up. Right, so as you can see, I've actually formed this wire, the exact sort of strip the sort of sleeve in the exact uh, same length as the solder when it's straightened out. And I've formed the wire into the same shape as the solder was. And yeah, that's what you've ended up with. So I've, all I've got to do now is basically solder up both ends. So it's going to be just a, sort of far enough away from this pin here. So when I sort of do the soldering on this, it's not going to sort of do the sleeving on there. And uh, yeah, up the other end basically. Um, yeah, that's going to be just in far enough away from that sort of pin down there. So this is actually a 30 gauge Kynar wire. It's readily available from a place like Farnell RS Components. But if you're in America, sort of mouse and DigiKey, you can get special strippers for these uh, for this Kynar wire. It comes in all colours. It's yeah, it's a great PCB sort of modification wire. So what I'll do now, I'll get these soldered up, and then I'll repeat the process on the other one. And then I'll sort of show you how you can sort of uh, glue these down afterwards. Now I use a glue called Tack Pack. I'll put a picture up at the end of the uh, the product code. So if you if we were, everyone were getting these uh, available from the same places as just mentioned, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get on with the, uh, the soldering these and uh, yeah, and then I'll sort of do the gluing after. So first thing I'll do is basically add some flux. We we'll do this uh, this pin down here first, sort of under the edge. So what you're gonna do is add some flux. The solder's got flux in it, but it's always good to add some external flux. So, yeah, if you watch any of my videos, uh, I do sort of bang on quite a bit about flux, how important it is. So, yeah, just need a bit around there. Doesn't matter if the wire moves slightly, because you can always sort of push it back into position before you do the other end. So I'll get this end soldered up, and then we sort of move on to the other end. So I've tinned, just tinned my iron 
just a slight sort of small amount of solder and then you don't do too much just so there you go basically got a nice join right around the outside of the wire the sleeving's going right up to the sort of pad as you can see you've got a gap sort of between the sort of pin there and the sleeving on that so when I sort of solder that one it's not going to affect the first wire so all we do now is go up to the other end just got to push this back into position and then we get this soldered up so it's, yeah it's going to be pretty much the exact length I need just get two pairs of tweezers I've just got to bend just push that in slightly over there and so we'll get this soldered up right that should do it it's going to take there so as you can see I'll try and zoom in slightly on this end so you can see that it takes so yes small amount of flux again I will put my sort of tweezers just gently on this wire I don't normally because it could can indent the sleeving but I should be all right actually so yeah small amount of flux around the joint so with a joint like this just want to go in really quick and then, uh, yeah the heat shouldn't travel too far and affect the sleeving you can get sort of sleeving that doesn't melt at all but this kind of yeah it can uh, can affect it so I'm just going to put my tweezers there I don't press on them just get a real quick joint as you can see I've got a nice joint going right down to the sort of pad and that's yeah that's basically the other end so as you can see just zoom back out so I've got a nice wire shaped like the original trace was and yeah so what we do what I'll do I'll sort of get the second wire fitted same as this do it exactly the same method I'll clean it all up then I'll sort of show you how to do the gluing and uh, yeah we'll see the end result right, so as you can see I've got the wires both in place soldered up and they're sort of both cleaned up now they're looking pretty good so yeah basically what I do now I'm just going to secure the wires down in a couple of uh, positions yeah with this one I'm just going to basically put a sort of fillet of glue over there and on this point I'm going to just go over the two so I actually use a glue called tack pack it comes with an activator and a glue but um, yeah the way I sort of do it I spray the activator on first sort of air dry it, it takes yeah, a few seconds and then put the glue over if you put the glue on first and then spray it the glue tends to sort of turn white and it sort of gets blown about so best thing to do is spray the activator on first basically just give it a few seconds wait for that to dry once it's sort of dissolved you can uh, yeah put a fillet of glue over now I just apply a small amount of glue on a, the end of a piece of solder and uh, yeah just take it over the point where you uh, you want to bond the wires down so what I do, just put a fillet over there. So that's that point done. And this is actually very clear glue. It's very good for putting wires down. It's what it's recommended. It's not it's not really strong, so if you need to remove it you can. But it will hold them down if you you know if you uh, don't want to remove them. So I'm just gonna put one more fillet over there. So that's both points done. So that sort, of, this sort of dries in, yeah, roughly thirty seconds. So uh, yeah, basically that's uh, that's what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up with sort of two nice wires. As you can see, I've got two nice fillets of glue going over. You can see sort of the activator still laying around. Once the glue's dry, you can just wipe that off if you want to. But you've actually come out with quite a nice end result from what we started with. So basically, this is how I do me sort of a kind of wire or any sort of small wire sort of links. And uh, yeah, so you will end up with a good result. So if you follow the instructions throughout this sort of small video, you should be okay. So anyway, I'm going to move on to another method now. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy this one. There's a few more later, a few more hints and tips along the way. So yeah, I'll get on with the next method and yeah, hopefully you enjoy that one. So move on to method number two. With this one, I'm just going to replace this broken trace with a length of solder braid. It's quite an easy fix, it get you out of trouble if you're stuck and yeah, because the braid sort of comes in different widths and you can sort of uh, manipulate it. You can basically yeah, fix any sort of trace and it's sort of made of copper strands so it's ideal. It's sold as easy. So again, as in the last video, what you want to do 
so you gently score across both ends just so you get to a sort of solid piece of a uh, solid piece of trace you don't have to go all the way through so you can sort of just wiggle these about slightly and that break through at the point where the score mark is so the best thing to do you can either just sort of tweak it or just sort of move it about like this and if you this will give you a solid piece of ground So you can see you've got a nice sort of solid piece of trace there. So we go to the other end and we do that. Just try to keep it in focus. So again, just take it to back far enough so it's a solid piece of trace. Again, just do it gently. You don't want to go through onto the other plane if you can help it. You don't need too much. Just go about halfway down. So this will give you two good reference points then we can sort of basically scrape back sort of both ends slightly so just manipulate that one off so what you can do is just sort of just wiggle it at the score so just lift it up and this eventually will break it at that score mark there you go so that's basically just all loose fibers so there you go you've got two nice solid ends so yeah what we do now just scrape back each end about half a mil to a millimeter. So you do just carefully, and we'll get these tinned up, and uh, yeah, they're ready to accept the new piece of braid that we're going to fit in there. So you just want to go through till we see the copper. Again, just do it gently. Take your time. You can get it sort of nice and straight. You're just going to get a nice, neat finish when you do your soldering. That's that end done. So go to the first then we'll just dust that out of the way so you can get a bit better view of what's happening. So go to this first then and we do this one. So we do again just go back about a millimetre. do it for that one and we can get them tinned up so what we do here is just add some external flux so the solder's already got flux in it but it tends to burn off quite quickly when you sort of put any heat on it so it's always good to add some external flux and then we just add a small amount of solder and uh, yeah we're basically ready to to accept the braid you just need a small amount on both ends. A quick wipe should do it. There you go, you've got two sort of nice tinned up pads and that's going to accept the new piece of sort of braid when we fit it into the gap. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to prepare some braid. Literally all you do is cut it to length to fit between the, the two pads. I do tin it slightly and then we sort of drop it in position and uh, get it soldered up. So as you can see, I've basically cut a piece of braid, the exact same sort of length as the uh, the gap in the trace between the two sort of tin pads. So I'm now going to basically put some external flux on and we lift it over into position and then start soldering it up. So I've already sort of pre-tinned the braid slightly. I'm just going to turn it around so you can concentrate on the bottom joint. Try and get that focused in for that one. So yeah, we basically lift it over in position, just add some external flux on this bottom joint. And we'll, uh, yeah, get soldering up. Just concentrate on that one. So you don't need too much solder because the braid's already sort of preloaded. So hopefully you can keep this in position. Just add a quick, just be quick on this. There you go, you've got a nice sort of curved joint there. So we'll, do, so we'll go to the other end, just turn this right around, then you can sort of see the, uh, the whole joint. Just get that back in focus. Right, now we get to do the second joint. So again, just add a little bit of external flux. I'll clean all this up in a minute so you can see the sort of end result. So again, just preload drying, don't need too much solder, small amount. Just go in quickly, do a yeah, quick joint, and then uh, yeah, it should be good. There you go. 
There you see you've got a nice curved joint. I'm just going to quick, give this a very quick, quick clean so uh, you see what the end result looks like. So I've got ultra sole cleaning fluid. There you go, you've got a nice sort of finish result. You've got two nice sort of joints, both ends. So that's what you're looking for. So as you can see, the sort of trace the exact same width as a new piece of braid. And that's, yeah, it's quite a, that'll get you out of trouble if you're ever sort of stuck for a, for a sort of a trace fix. So that's option number two. That's, uh, yeah, the, basically the, using your solder braid and that's, so what we do now, I'm just going to put a few pictures up the first two methods. Then I'll move on to a couple more methods after that. So uh, yeah, I'll put the pictures up now. So moving on from the, the quite wide sort of braid method, the 1.5 millimeter wide, we come to 0.2 millimeter wide trace. Now, as you can see, this one's not looking too good. As you see, you've got this, uh, yeah, sort of right up in the air, one sort of one whole length of the trace going right back to the wire. That's the only thing keeping it sort of attached. And the other end's not looking too good either. That's sort of gone quite a way back. So this is a method where I'm basically going to show you, uh, yeah, the sort of the uses you can make of your wires. So even though they're heavily resisted, we're going to sort of trim this off at this point up here. We'll get all this sort of scraped off carefully. So you don't want to damage the barrel when you're doing a wire. So we'll get the top scraped off carefully. Get that tinned up, and uh, yeah, you can use that as a good anchor point to put a new trace right along, sort of to a stable point at the other end. So like I say, I've got a 0.2 sort of a millimeter wide enamel coated copper wire, and uh, yeah, that's what we're going to use in this one. And yeah, I'll show you a sort of good way of, sort of pre-judging your length of sort of trace, getting the ends tinned up. Um, I've got a good method for or a good trick for that, so I'll show you that in this video, and you'll end up with quite a nice sort of fix. And yeah, basically we follow the indent in the board, so the trace is going to exactly match the position of the old one we'll get it glued up in a couple of spots for a bit of stability so what we do we move on straight away with uh, getting the ends tidied up and then we'll start sort of scraping the wire and uh, yeah move on from that stage so we'll move on to sort of part one now you see right in the middle of your screen i'm going to start with that wire where the sort of loose trace is attached so first thing to do is uh yeah get rid of the, the loose piece of trace so you just gentle slight bit of pressure this one should sort of break away just get rid of lift that off just give it a quick wiggle let's got rid of that so basically what we do now is we'll scrape the resist off carefully so you've got to be careful because you've got a barrel going through there to the other side with sort of being a layers attached to it Oh yeah, just take your time with this. Eventually you can get all the resist off and we can get a nice sort of tinned pad. I'll brush this away in a minute just to see where we are. Just get a slight bit more off. I can already see some of the copper coming through. Alright, just give it a quick, quick wipe away and see where we are. Yeah, I haven't put too much pressure on the barrel, so should be good there, no damage. Right, hopefully that's uh, pretty much where we need to be. Hopefully it's still in focus, because this is actually a really small sort of wire. So as you can see, you've got all the copper sort of showing there, sort of around, right around the outside. Just going to zoom out slightly, so it's sort of... Shows it slightly clearer. And hopefully I can get that tinned up quite nicely. So just put some external flux on. Just 
You just need a small amount on your iron. And we'll get that tinned up. Hopefully it should take first time. There you go, you've got a nice sort of a secure point to put your wire to now. So there's no damage to that at all. So yeah, like I say, you've got a good secure point at one end. So now we can concentrate on the other end and get that one done. So again, right in the middle of your screen, we've got the one at the other end. So with this one, I'm just going to uh, basically get a secure point. Just by scoring slightly past where it's lifted. This one's just going to break off as it is, it looks quite loose, so yeah, there it goes. So I've got a nice solid end on there, just try and get that in focus when you see it. So, there, there's, so yeah, I've got a nice wire, a nice piece of trace. I don't really need to take this one back to the wire. So what I'm going to do is just gently scrape that about a millimetre back on the trace. I could sort of go back to the wire, but yeah, I'm doing that at the other end. So with this one, I'm just going to sort of do the trace sort of method there you see go back about a millimetre just carefully make sure you don't touch the uh, the other planes and we can get this one tinned up and then we've got both ends sort of prepared for the new wire so I'll just sort of show you where how that is sort of scraped hopefully the yeah, it's quite a, it's hard to keep this in focus because the trace is so small. But I'll do my best. So yeah, I'm just going to tin that one now. So again, some external flux. Oh, it's getting it back in focus. The flux has uh, affected it. I'll clean it up in a minute so you can have a good look. Yeah, when you're doing traces, it's small. It's quite hard to for me to keep my camera angle good. I've got a nice bit of tinning on there. I'm just going to zoom out and then I'll we'll show you the whole area. I'll just clean all this up and I'll show you the whole area. And you see where we are. So I've going to use my ultrasol cleaning fluid. So yeah, hopefully from that you can see I've got two pretty good uh, solid points to get to. So we're going to put that, the wire along the indent in the board and we should end up with a good fix. So we'll, yeah, we'll do, sort of get on to the wire stage now. Yes, yeah, so on your screen at the moment you can see where the trace was and where we sort of tinned up the end, the sort of wire and the, and the piece of trace near the, near the other wire at the other end. So what I've got in the middle, I've got literally, that is a piece of the enamel coated copper wire. I've just literally got my scalpel and gently scraped these maybe see it's about a millimetre I've tried to scrape all the way around um, yeah I've done the same at the other end you can sort of melt this off with a soldering iron but I find if you scrape it carefully you don't go through it through the wire and uh, you get a nice joint so yeah up the top here I've got a piece of solder and that solder was sort of uh, matched to this pattern and then straightened as in yeah like I say the, uh, the kind of wire method at the start of the videos so basically I've got my length from that and uh, prepared this one against that one and I know now this is going to fit nicely into the gap so what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, sort of captain tape this copper wire into position onto both ends and then we can get on with the soldering stage we should come on now to the soldering stage so I'm basically going to start with the first joint so the one on the wire down to sort of this end then we move up to the other end do that one so yeah basically again you want your external flux. So just put a small bit on the uh, on the joint, and hopefully I've got enough of the coating sort of scraped off to to get a joint. So I just want a small amount on your iron, and hopefully we can get a, a, a good joint. And the captain tape will do its job. There you go. Straight away, I've got a nice joint. You can sort of see. Over the top, try and sort of zoom in there. I don't know if I can. It's quite hard to film this. Yeah, you sort of just about see the, the sort of solder going up the sides and over the top. So it's so small this wire it's hard to get clear. But yeah, hopefully you can sort of see the joint there. So basically we spin the board. Well, basically I'll leave it like this and we just do the other end. 
I'm just going to try and sort of zoom in there. It's hard to sort of focus on this one. I think I'll just have to do it and uh, try and get some photos after so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, I'll just do this one and hopefully we see afterwards what it looks like. So again, some external flux. And we'll get this soldered up. A small amount on your iron, just touch it on the join and it should go. Just going to put a small amount on the other side. And that's gone as well. It's hard for you to see that, but hopefully you sort of see the silver. Yeah, I can't really get that clear. It's quite hard. Hopefully you can see the sort of solder on the end there. So that's basically the soldering stage taking place. So as you can see, I've quickly cleaned this up with my cleaning fluid and I've sort of bonded the wire down in sort of two points. I've sort of got one down here, just down there, and there's one sort of further over there. So yeah, it's looking good. So basically, if you're sort of following the pattern of the original trace, I've got two secure joints at each end. And yeah, that's, the, that's become a good fix. So I've tried to match the width for the, the trace, which is quite important. And yeah, so basically you can see what can be achieved. So anyway, I'm going to move on from this one onto a, yeah, I'm going to sort of show you now how to do a donor sort of trace from another board to, to sort of fix one of your, your other traces. So we'll move on to that one now. Right, so following on from the real sort of narrow trace, the 0.2 millimetre one, as in the last video, we come onto this 1.5 millimetre trace. So it's going to be similar to the solder braid one earlier. With this one, I'm actually going to fill this uh, the gap where you can basically see you've got both ends pretty up in the air. Um, yeah, we're going to fill this one with a sort of piece of donor trace removed from another board. So if you've ever got any sort of scrap PCBs, worth keeping them. Sort of, I sort of use pads, traces, um, yeah, all sorts of donor boards. So if you've got a selection of uh, old scrap ones, yeah, it's always good to keep them. So the first thing, as always, we're going to sort of lift off these. Uh, yeah, take the lifted parts off. So we'll basically cut across there, scrape back about half a millimetre to a millimetre and get them tinned. Same up the other end. So basically stabilise what you've got. And then we'll sort of, uh, yeah, get some trace lifted off another board and put it in position. I'll sort of show you how to scrape the ends of that and get it all soldered up. And afterwards, yeah, you can always sort of glue up the sides of it or put a sort of solder mask over it to secure it. It's actually a really good fix. Very sort of, uh, looks good. Not as noticeable as the braid method. So yeah, what we do, we move on to the first stage of uh, just getting what you can see tidied up and then uh, I'll sort of move on to show you how to get the trace off the other board. So we move on to the first stage now. So from the last clip where the sort of trace was sort of curled up both ends, I've actually missed the stage out on this. That's because it was exactly the same stage I did on the braid one from earlier, where it lets you just score across the trace, wiggle sort of both ends uh, free to sort of give you a good sort of starting point and then I scraped back slightly so i've done the exact same as on the uh on the braid method from earlier so as you can see i've got two nice points down here that are already pre-tinned it's all there and there i've just done it to speed the video up slightly it's quite a long one so what i'm going to do now i'm just literally going to go over to a donor board take a trace off and then we'll get that measured up and uh yeah scraped back so all you do on that you just measure it up get it to fit the gap scrape back about a millimeter or half a millimeter at either end place it in position and then just do two joints at a, yeah, one at each end and you'll end up with um, quite a neat fix so yeah I'll sort of go over to the donor board now and we'll get that lifted off right so this is basically a donor trace I'm just going to try and lift off to sort of replace the piece we've got missing so I'm just going to peel this one up so I'm not too bothered if I sort of uh, dig into the board to start with so the main thing is just to dig it up get a sort of break going across I wouldn't normally do it like this, but the camera angle that I'm having to film at is uh, sort of making me. So what you do, just break it through. Just want to get right, so I've now got it right across. So I'm just going to straighten that bit out. So that's now curled up. So hopefully, if I can get hold of that with tweezers, I can lift it. So it goes along in one movement, trying to keep it quite straight. I'm just going to grab that with tweezers. I might have to use, I'm going to have to use a bigger pair actually to get proper grip of it. 
I might even end up using some pliers. So there you go, just curl that up, pull it up straight. So hopefully I've got a piece there where the resist is might go a little bit further. Let's just come back a bit and I'll try and peel it up and keeping it quite sort of flat. Right, so as you can see, I've got a nice long length peeled up. Hopefully within there I can get a piece of the length we need. And uh, yeah, I'll trim it to shape and uh, I'll scrape it back. I'll do that quickly, sort of off camera. I'm literally just going to cut it to sort of length like the braid was earlier. I'll sort of literally scrape it back exactly how I've sort of showed earlier. And then, uh, yeah, we drop it into position and uh, I'll show you how we solder it up. I'm just doing a sort of skip a couple of little bits just to speed the video up. We joined the video where I've literally trace we just lifted off the donor board as you can see i've got a sort of length it come off really well no resistors broken as you sort of saw when i took it off i've literally just cut it to the size of the the gap and i've literally scraped back about half a millimeter on the either end so now it's just a case of basically lifting it into position and uh, yeah trying to get it soldered up it's pretty awkward for me to do this because uh well i've got my camera it sort of gets in the way of my iron so uh yeah, please bear with me. Hopefully, I can get it done first time. But it's, yeah, it's a little bit awkward. I haven't got a microscope camera. I've got other, another way of filming. So I'm just going to nudge it into position. So I'm quite happy with the with the placement either end. As you can see, it looks pretty good before it's soldered. Hopefully, I can keep it that way. So what you want is just a small amount of external flux. So it doesn't really matter if it goes everywhere, you can clean it after. Just try and keep that there. Just try and that. You try and keep it, yeah, if you can keep it really straight and neat, it's, you're going to get a really sort of satisfying, nice job. Right, there you go, that's nicely sort of fluxed and uh, back in position. Now hopefully I can get my iron in there and get these soldered up. So I don't need too much solder on this, because only it's a very small joint. Just hopefully I can keep that down in place while I sort of solder it. So there you go, you've got a nice sort of ball of solder on that end. So I'm going to go up to the other end now and do that. And then I'll clean it all up and sort of show you the results. So you can always put sort of glue up the side of this, uh, this fix and put, sort of put a solder mask over the joints for extra strength and uh, yeah, that sort of stop the joints being seen. That's actually a really good fix. If you've got the time to do it, it's a good good method. There you go, you've got two nice joints up the side, or both ends, and uh, yeah, it's quite a nice result. So I'm quickly just going to clean sort of some of the flux off, and so you can hopefully you can see uh, what it looks like. Just get that back in focus. Sorry, I lost, lost my focus there. Right, so there you go. You've got two nice little joints. They're only about a millimetre sort of each one. So I'm just going to zoom out so you can get sort of an idea of what it looks like within the board. Yeah, so it's actually quite a smart fix. It's fixed that trace exactly the same width, which is yeah pretty important. You don't want to put a real skinny trace on a on a big fat sort of trace. So uh, yeah, that's so it's coming really well. So like I say, you can put glue up the sides, or you can mask around the ends. For extra strength so that's basically how i do my donor traces so yeah hopefully you've uh, enjoyed all these videos i'll put a few more pictures and a couple of different sort of methods uh, up after this one and uh, yeah thanks for tuning in to, to all these videos and hopefully i'll see you again soon with sort of more soldering videos so like i say hope you enjoyed it i'll put some pictures up now and uh, i'll see you all again soon thanks for your time